ag economists are still mixed on if we'll see a recession this year and if we do, how severe it will be. But up until this point, consumers are still spending. Here's John Phipps. Earlier this summer, my faithful air conditioner in my shop stopped working. I called our usual HVAC service and the technician came and refilled about six pounds of refrigerant. It was leaking. I was stunned by a bill for over $600, not counting the service call. A week later, it quit again, and before I poured good money after bad, I checked with another repair service to see what they charged for R410A refrigerant. It was the same. Then I asked Google and found this. The retail markup for R410A is about 10 times at least. In fairness, 410A will be phased out in a couple of years by the EPA, so inventories are shrinking. But I could buy it online right now for less than $10 a pound if I were an HVAC technician. I got an estimate then for a new unit of identical size, $8,300. Going back to Google, I found the same unit that you see, about the same size, designed for do-it-yourself installation, 2800 bucks delivered. I took my time, but in three days, I had replaced the, my old unit. The new one is a heat pump, too, so it works both to heat and cool with better efficiency than the old one. My point is not that HVAC dealers are ripping us off, but that unusually large markups invite competition to offer products for home installation and for YouTube expert entrepreneurs to show me how to do it. There has never been a more lucrative time to employ or learn even modest technical skills. My dealer was charging what the market would bear, which is justifiable in my book. Lower priced alternatives affect what some of us in the market will bear, however. I started wondering if this was evidence for what economists call greedflation, which I'd previously kind of discounted. But this chart from the Roosevelt Institute seems to support this assertion. Indeed, general inflation seems to be bare, bare good for corporate profits, and the pandemic was a great time to start raising those prices. Again, nobody is forcing us to pay for this corporate windfall, but as consumers continue to spend, manufacturers all the way down to retailers have no reason to lower prices or their profits. The American consumer is spending briskly, too, even adjusting for inflation. Some of these expenditures are, of course, unavoidable. But we're also spending on non-essentials. Why is the big question, but it clearly, inflation is partly fueled by some freewheeling spending. Thanks, John. Well, a current freshman here at the University of Nebraska took on a major project during the pandemic. And the results? Well, it's an antique tractor goal. We'll show you his special farm all next.